um, that container and communicate with container and manage container, um, never, the, nevertheless, where it's running. And it found already a very high adoption. 93% of corporations who answered on the cloud native survey utilize container. This is a huge number. But container itself doesn't make the magic happen. So what we also see is that Kubernetes as the container orchestrator of trust and a kind of de facto standard comes around and is responsible for setting up and to implement complex systems running in containers. And we see that uh, Kubernetes is basically implemented everywhere on any kind of infrastructure, globally scaling cloud providers, local regional infrastructure as a service, on edge, on airplanes. So there's theoretically no limits, but sometimes it maybe doesn't make so much sense to use it. And if you take a look into the European market, which is very interesting because we see here an adoption of a little bit more than 90%. And compared to hypervisors which has a market share of, or market adoption better to say of 92 percent we are very close in fact in the last seven years kubernetes has reached the same amount of share on the market more or less as hypervisor did in the last 20 years and this is crazy so container kubernetes itself and also together as a big, nice package has drastically influenced the information communication technology market for us. It's a big bang actually for a whole new market based on open source projects. It's boosting the open source ecosystem drastically with continuously implement new features, new ideas, and yeah, it's a kind of thought leadership in many ways. And it also changed the way how we see infrastructure so nowadays we're talking more about infrastructure as applications rather than of infrastructure for the rest of my life. Things like security, observability, this all got more plug and play. It actually makes fun to implement it and to play around with it. It's not a burden, but um, you can do so many cool things with it. And it's um, not that complicated as you have done in the past years. And Kubernetes abstracts away the hypervisor, the cloud service provider, infrastructure as a service. And this can be very valuable also for heavy regulated markets. Um, banks and insurances often needs to define the exit strategy. What to do if they have to demigrate from a cloud provider? To do a migration one-to-one -to, -one to another cloud provider would be not that sustainable in the end. So Kubernetes as an abstraction layer could be there a very reasonable good solution for it. But Kubernetes also creates knowledge voidness. This is this big black hole in your actually enterprises and corporates, which you fall into when you try to implement huge Kubernetes implementations. And this voidness comes right behind the field of missing knowledge from cloud providers. So there's a, a big hole, a big issue of adapting to it because it's a continuously moving, very crow, big crowing environment where you're not really yeah, can walk with the same speed as the community does. So what's next? Solomon Hikes, one of the developer or inventors of Docker um, mentioned already 2019 that if WASM, so WebAssembly and the WASC, the inter interface specification would have existed in 2008, they would never have created Docker. And this is a big statement um, from someone who has uh, theoretically invented or practically invented something which has changed so much the way how we are working, um, how we're implementing applications. So what is WebAssembly or what is WASM? There are many aspects which we can take a look on, um, but the three, I would say, outstanding positions we have described here. WebAssembly is a kind of intermediate layer. On the one hand side, it supports various programming languages. On the other hand side, it supports very different architectures, kernel architectures. And yeah, it allows you to basically abstract this both things away from each other. So if you have a new chipset and you need to support it, you actually just need to make your WebAssembly runtime being able to execute on it, and then you can ship any other application to it. 
It's very secure by default. If you build a WASM module and execute it and you do not tell what it is allowed to do, it cannot do anything. It's running, but it doesn't do something. Because it's an, also an encapsulated binary and there's no operating system in it, it is also, I would not say impossible to hack, but there's not so much which you can hack. And this on the other hand side um, comes with basically the opponent of what a container uh, can do. The container by default is theoretically allowed to do everything, while with a WASM module, you're allowed not to do anything. And it is fast, blazing fast, and way more faster than you would expect. In comparison to the most of the containers which we see on the market, it is more than 100 times faster than that in startup time. Means that um, this is, for example, a perfect implementation if we talk about serverless. Because rather than it maybe still needs a few hundred milliseconds until the container started, this is now very less milliseconds at all. And this is also because the footprint of um, a WebAssembly module is very, very small. We're talking about megabytes, not gigabytes. So most WebAssembly modules, which we see, running around two, three, four megabytes. While in an enterprise create environment, golden hardened images are often around a gigabyte or more. So is WebAssembly a new paradigm? Hmm, maybe. One spoiler, I think yes. Um, yet there's a lot of things which needs to be developed, but we see already that um, it gets so much drive and the step from a containerized environment to a WebAssembly environment is not that difficult. Especially not when you think about the use cases. You have tools like Figma or Liges, which runs as a WebAssembly web module, totally encapsulated and still guarantees a good performance. This is outstanding because Figma, for example, is very powerful in what it can do. But if it would run this for every customer, um, they would need a very large infrastructure, but they don't need because running and executing it as a WebAssembly module, um, basically in your browser, it's getting quite interesting here. And I know it's at outside of the browser, but we need to start somewhere. Then we have plugin systems like the Envoy proxy in a Kubernetes environment. Um, with the WebAssembly, you can do modifications and configurations of it and allows that you yeah, basically have a very trusted environment. On the other hand, it can isolate directly on the other hand side, like you born. Um, and this allows you that you have a, a little bit higher secure environment itself, which leads to embedded sandboxes like you have in Firefox. So it prevents that third party libraries could expose you. We see also an adoption in blockchain scenarios like the Internet Compute Protocol from the Defini Foundation utilized uh, WebAssembly. We have implementations like Cosmosm, um, which utilize WebAssembly for running blockchains. And obviously, we're going to talk about containerization with Crustle, Wasm Cloud, and Wasm Edge. And as mentioned, serverless platforms are on the rise. And I think their WebAssembly will really make the difference because on the one hand side, it will allow you to execute very fast applications, but it reduces your costs and the cost of the infrastructure owner. And so it's a win-win situation and it's more, more secure. So, in the containerization environment, we see, for example, the Crusted implementation. A cool project that allows you to build nodes where you can run uh, WebAssembly modules. You just have to exchange the, um, uh, the, the um, runtime, it was a WASM runtime. You need to run the WASM module there. Um, and you need to uh, basically replace the, the cube, kubelet with a Crustlet. But then, here you go. The downside is you cannot execute container and WASM modules at the same host. That's not possible. So you need to maintain multiple nodes, multiple node groups, which can cause some additional maintenance effort at the moment. Therefore, we see WASM Edge because it just can run along the container images and place together with the OCI runtime and the CRI runtimes so that you do not have to change anything. And this is very powerful because here you can really run a container image and a WASM image beside each other. 
which are that it's cutting deep into the Kubernetes. On the other hand side, it utilizes the Kubernetes environment. But we'll talk more about this in a second. And then we have the Wasm Cloud, which is actually a new paradigm, a new, new platform. And here we can really think about a new paradigm because this is a system which can run on Kubernetes, but also in virtual machines or anywhere else. Um, all the different nodes are uh, connected through something called Lattice based on NUTS messaging system. And it's actually there for yeah, implement the business logic within these things. So when we talk about WASM and the potentials based on WASM Edge, we see here that through the clear move and strong forward to the Kubernetes environment, it can utilize and leverage all the existing tooling means that it doesn't need to develop any new big functions and features because everything is given. On the other hand side, Wasm Edge is also able to run and be executed as itself, as a modern web application runtime, if you want like this. It can host serverless functions and extend it and being even kind of embedded. I'm always a bit, bit careful with embedded because it's not really embedded in an Edge device, but because it's so small, and the runtime is so small and can be brought actually to any kind of devices. The Wasm Edge is a very good alternative in comparison to very expensive embedded development. So all over all, um, Wasm Edge bring the advantages of Wasm to the existing ecosystem of Kubernetes um, together, uh, but without being any kind of inversive. And this is very strong. And this will also, from my perspective, drive very much the adoption of Wasm Edge and Wasm modules in the cloud native environment. On the image level, um, we also have here some benefits because as you can see in the first black box, this is how you can build a Wasm image. You build it from scratch, so there's no operating system inside. You just add your Wasm module and then you execute it by starting up when the container started. That's it, all the magic happens. In addition, there's just one minor thing which needs to be done. And this is the annotation of the module.wasm.image slash variant equals compat. This will tell when the image is getting executed on a Wasm Edge module in a Kubernetes cluster, hey, you need to execute me on the Wasm Edge and not on the container runtime. So this is one minor dependencies which you need to keep in mind. Um, but I think sooner or later, the adoption also here for giving this kind of annotations also through other build mechanisms um, will come. And then also here, you do not need to rely on one single tool like Builder, which actually does a very great job. Uh -huh. So let's have a look how does all the things looks like. I have here um, a machine running <clears throat> and uh, ah, perfect directly dropped out of it and I need shortly the password from the environment. All right, so back we are. Um, as you can see, we have here um, a few things which are interesting to, to highlight. We have Builder because it builds my container. Um, we have an HTTP server demo. Um, we have Kubernetes and Docker running and we'll also highlight why. And then we have a Wasm Edge demo. So first things first, um, we take a look into the Wasm Edge demo and there we have an echo demo. And you can see here, there's a cargo toggle, which means that uh, this is a Rust program in the end, which is executed. Um, you see here, it has a name of called echo and it will be built from the source uh, main.rs um, file. And if you take a look into the uh, um, source folder, you go to source and then take a look into the main RS, you see there is nothing big and special going on. So um, it just will basically print echo and then whatever argument we throw into, that's it. That's all what it is doing. So going back, um, the first thing which we need to do is to run cargo build. 
And we have here the target for WASM32 and the WASI specification. So the WebAssembly interface specification, because you can also just make a random uh, cargo build and then you have your uh, Rust implementation like a, like a normal implementation. And this is already quite helpful. Um, what you can see here then directly, you get a cargo log file and you have your source and then you, we have the target folder which is newly created. Um, it knows some of your other folders and then we have all the um, builds and most importantly our echo wasm build. And um, when you can execute it here, I would highlight that we call now wasm edge and say target wasm32 blah 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 echo say hi to you all and then you get just response echo hi uh, to you all. So this is a very stupid, simple example, obviously, uh, but you have seen it's very fast build. It's nothing special. Um, however, this was module is yeah, super reliable because it's uh, quite small, it's robust build, and it can be also just actually your um, Rust program. And you can do the same with JavaScript or Go or whatever. So this is not the, the, the very special thing in it. Um, I have also there an, another nice demo um, in the HTTP server. So again, we have a cargo tomo. This by time it looks a little bit different um, because you have here a few dependencies which we take into, like the HTTP codec, um, the byte codec, and the wasm edge wasi socket. Um, this is needed so that we can actually do the uh, network communication. And um, if we go to the source folder, we'll take a look into this one. You can see it's a little bit more uh, code which we have here, but actually in the end, it's just an HTTP handler, which um, does the same like before. It echoes uh, whatever we throw into and um, gives us as an, as an output. So, um this time we will run again a cargo build um, but you maybe will notice that here is release written so it's not a debug like before with the echo one but it's built for the release why so with the debug you get everything you get uh, all the packages ever gets thrown in and you can take a look precisely on what's going on but if you make a release it gets reduced so everything that is not needed um it gets thrown out and everything is get compiled into your code um, from the libraries which are needed. So when you have your module, we can take a look. Oh, let's go up on the place. So um, you can see here is a little bit more going on. So again, we have our cargo log, and then we have our target for the release build, um, the dependencies, and then here our wasm32 wasi folder um, also again for the release and we have our http server.wasm um, in the end just to be sure about what we are doing here with the container i give some execution rights to it um, depending on how it is configured uh, and which rights you have by yourself um, you need to do this and what we then just simply can do is again run wasm edge and give the target for the http server so now you see there's nothing else going on. So I also have to uh, check basically on this host and we can run, oh, perfectly also disconnect in this terminal, I forgot. Try to reconnect. So there we are. And now we can make a curl, oh, perfect. Now we can make the curl. I think this is the network today. And you can see here that we immediately get the answer from um, the WASM module running echo name equals WASM edge. So uh, we can also say something like, hey all. Ah, perfect. So 
avoid the writing mistake and you immediately also get here the answer so you see that it's so fast um, giving you feedback that even the terminal doesn't get the time to um, get to the next line however um, this is still well okay cool now we have an http handler you can answer some requests uh, all cool this is running either here in a in a wasm edge um, module or um, what we also can do with it uh, is basically to build a container from and there it's getting super interesting so let's see where we are here yeah, on the root level so where we first need to go is to the target wasi release and create a docker file and just the example which i've shown you before in the presentation we don't need anything more than from scratch at the um, http server.wasm and execute it as soon as the container starts that's all what we have to do here then the next thing is that we need to actually do a pseudo builder build and give the annotation um, with the module was an image variant compared um, to the HTTP server image. And last but not least, um, we also need to push it to our container registry. And here's very important. This is just uh, the Docker Hub. Um, there's nothing special going on. We can fast go into it. Um, we have our WASM server and just pushed a few seconds ago with the WASM uh annotation tag now as you can see and as i highlighted already earlier um this, this approach of building the images and the utilization in bosom edge or i will show you in a second also in kubernetes this is very easy to use so um how we can use it we have here running kubernetes or kubernetes in docker because i do not want to blow up the whole uh, infrastructure too much and um you can see oh always forget about because i'm lazy about writing kubectl um we have here already for example one wasm edge running i call this wasm edge 2 and what we can do now is to throw in a new um, container kubectl run um, we'll never restart it call it wasm edge from an image um, with the HTTP server with was some annotation. And then we have the annotation of our module and override here some specifications so that also we have the host network and we can talk with it. So now we also have this was match thing here. And what we need to do and find out next is the IP address um, so that we can actually do a call on it. It's the 172.18.0.2. So what we can do this time is like this. 172.18.0.2. And then we have the port 1, 2, 3, 4 um, specified. And then you get also here immediately an answer on our curl. So again, we can change here the curl um, as we want to have it. Uh, perfect, so let's break the command. So we can also say, just copy it fast and say like, hello world. Right, so then you have also here your hello world. Again, it's blazing fast and it's running your Kubernetes. Um, which is quite awesome. There's nothing special in it. Um, so it's a standard kind cluster, kind control plane. The implementation here, um, you can find under the Wasm Edge documentation um, for Kubernetes and Docker. It's actually done by uh, two colleagues of mine, Sven and Christoph. Um, kudos for your implementation. And you can see here, it's from our liquid reply um, repo, basically the kind C run Wasm implementation. So if you want to get started with something like that, it's the, I would say at the moment, easiest way to, to have also your local development um, around Blossom. So summarizing slowly everything up, Blossom Edge, awesome solution R, isn't it? So it can run alongside everything what you know so far, also on your virtual machines, also on your Kubernetes, on the edge, 
um, very good adoption possibilities here. Um, the specification you have seen, it's just yet another Docker file. It supports all the CRI, OCIs, and Kubernetes distros, so there's no limit in it. And you can use the existing Kubernetes ecosystem, which is great because you have hundreds of open source tools solving very specific problems, and you can use all of it. What you have to consider, um, it's an additional tool chain which you need, for example, Builder to build the, annotate the image. Um, I think this will change in future, but at the moment it's needed. For some use cases, you need an SDK. Uh, if you want to build a, a full WASM Edge or full serverless implementation, you need some SDKs to make this possible. And it sometimes can lead to confusion that WASM Edge solves so much problems. Um, so it's solved on the one hand side, or not means problems, but it can solve and run on the one hand side in Kubernetes, but also on VMs, but also on Edge. So um, one and the same implementation for all of these use cases. Uh, in my former role as enterprise architect, I always got a little bit skeptic, I would say. Um, but so far, we have not discovered any big flaws in it. I can really say that it works. So. From my point of view, was on edge would be the best choice to extend your current orchestration um, and even environment depend, even not really matter where you are running. And it also extends your container landscape because comparing the Docker-like containers and WebAssembly, WebAssembly is better in performance. Um, the resource footprint is very awesome. It's nearly nothing. The isolation, think about like uh, having big multi-tenant clusters, well, with WebAssembly, this is less a problem. Um, it's quite safe. Uh, it's very portable, as I said. It can run wherever the runtime can run, and it's highly secure. Where it's not so good yet is about that not all of the programming languages are supported, and it's not that easy to use sometimes. Also, my demo was showing you that it's actually quite easy to utilize it. But if you get started with it, it takes some time and until you have all the tools installed and so on, it, it, it's not that fast in, in the setup. And from the management perspective or manageability perspective, that's easy. Um, Boss is quite, quite good to handle. So WebAssembly and WASM together has a very big potential beyond the browser. It enables your use cases and it finalized, finally gives you the chance to also yeah, run use cases in a Kubernetes-like way where Kubernetes itself doesn't make sense, which is awesome. And I'm pretty sure it will not substitute containers. Uh, containers at the moment is replacing a lot of virtual machines, but it also means that there's heavy lifting applications moving to co containers. Wasm is not made for those heavy applications. This is also clear, so it will not substitute them here. And we also see on the other side, Wasm can extend like the Envoy proxy, Kubernetes, its perfection. Um, at the moment, we see that there's some harmonization issues. There's a lot of co things going on in the market, and this makes it sometimes a little bit difficult to be adapted. Um, but in the near future, I believe that this organization will sort all their things out and that we have here then also an ecosystem, which is like clean and tidy up and move on. And as soon as the developer experience for WebAssembly will improve, this will be a game changer. So if, it, uh, if you even can make some more steps forward and it's, yeah, feels more natural, then um, I also believe here, you will have a very good um, adoption rate um, throughout your ecosystem and also throw out the different kind of roles in the development environment. So how do we see it in the end? We go with the container for the flow. Whatever needs to be containerized, every kind of application, so there's a big ecosystem, all the languages are supported. And then somehow it's this first born um, yeah, kind of effect, like everything is like, oh, we have a big eye on it. On the other side, um, build this version for the future because it's, consistently fast, doesn't matter where you're executing it. It's small, it's reusable, and it's very universal. And also container claim more or less all the statements. In the direct comparison between WASM and containers, you see that one thing is really universal and reusable and small, while the other thing is better than a VM, definitely. But 
there are some use cases where the one or the other makes more sense at the moment. So both together actually is a win-win in my point of view and will go along um, also for the future. So thank you very much. Have a great day and enjoy your time on the conference.